What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. And today's video is another mixing tip. It's the next step in the mixing process for me, and that is um, the static mix, okay? So after we've done our, uh, our cleaning up EQ before we start doing anything, you know, okay, so I should clear this up. We should have had a nice orchestral balance before we even go into this uh, EQ process. So by that I mean while we're arranging stuff, uh, we're trying to get a general balance of the orchestra, right? If, you know, we're writing orchestral music, so we're trying to make sure the flute is not louder than the trumpet. We're trying to make sure the, the timpani is not louder than the um, the nine horn press section. I don't know. Um, we're just trying to get a nice general balance of all the instruments so that it sounds relatively realistic, okay? Now, of course, it's not going to be perfect yet. That comes with uh, automation later, but uh, I just wanted to go over... The next step now that we've done some EQ to clean up the bad frequencies in our tracks, we prepared the tracks, now they're good to go. So what is the next step? Well, the next step is called the static mix, okay? And this process in the mixing uh, mixing gig takes uh, can take quite a while because this is really the number one most important thing when it comes to mixing any style of music is getting the overall balances right, okay? Now, the thing about orchestral music is that there are a lot of dynamics. So there's a lot of soft parts, there's a lot of loud parts. So what part do you start with and which part do you use as a reference for your balance for the entire song, right? Or entire piece. Um, the general rule is to kind of go with the loudest section. So usually that's going to come on the last chorus of a song or kind of at the latest section, later section of an orchestral piece. So for example, so here, this part is kind of the loudest part of the entire piece or the entire song. I would have had the vocal here, but yeah, again, I lost the vocal file for some reason, so uh, you can see all the processing I did on it. But the vocal file or the vocal, um, you know, take was recorded at a pretty good level, so I didn't have to tweak it too much. Um, I kind of set it at a nice conservative level of minus 6.3 um, decibels, and then um, everything else I balanced around that. So. Because the vocal is the most important, I um, set that to a level first. I, I think I actually put that at zero uh, because that, that's kind of the, my standard. I put it at zero first, and then I started balancing the other instruments around that. So one by one, I basically went and I said, okay, the string tremolo, where does that come in? Um, where is that track? It's over here. There's a lot of them. So in this part of the song, when the uh, all the instruments are going at the same time, how loud do I want the string tremolo in comparison to the vocal? Obviously, it's going to be softer. So um, I turned the overall volume of the patch down in contact. So here, I pulled it up just a little bit so it sat nicely with the vocal. Then I moved on to another instrument and set that in relation to both the string tremolo and the vocal, and so on and so forth. So every time you're bringing up a new instrument, um, you're basically uh, balancing it in relation to the most important instrument or a vocal. In this case, it is the vocal, you know? Um, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention is that to start your static mix, you actually need to bring all your faders down to minus infinity or down to the very, very bottom so that there's no signal coming out. So that one by one, you can then bring in the most important track first. So in this case, the vocal, um, then pull up uh, tracks one by one by order of importance. But uh, yeah, that, that is the idea. So bringing all your faders down, you, a really easy way to do it in Logic is just highlighting everything, clicking shift, and then clicking on where you want to select all the tracks up to, clicking on one fader and dragging them all down. And then that, that will bring them all down to zero. So that's how you do your static mix, okay? All the faders down at the very bottom, you drag up the most important one, uh, in this case, the vocal, and then you balance everything around each other. Um, around the vocal mainly, but everything has to sit nicely with each other, okay? Now, of course, like I said, this is bound to change throughout the context of a piece and a song. Um, you know, instruments swell in and out, volumes change, so this is where you automate later to get all that stuff done. But just to get a good good starting point, a nice uh, balanced mix, right? Uh, this is what you do, and that is kind of the quick version of, uh, you know, how to do it. Um, this could take a long time. So I could actually do another dedicated video on this in the future showing uh, me going through a mix and actually doing this live. But in this case, I just wanted to tell you the process of how I do it, okay? So in the next video, we'll get into top-down mixing. That's a juicy one. And again, I'm gonna show you the processing I, I you know, use on 
top-down mixing and why I do it. And we'll talk about that in tomorrow's video. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.